Hi, this is Brian Gracely, and we're going to continue with this series of videos really doing an update to one that's been very, very popular, uh, and that's looking at OpenStack. Uh, in the past, we had done some, boy, it's been a long time, we were looking at what was either the, the C release or the B release of OpenStack. Uh, we're now up to the F release called Folsom, and it's been probably six, eight months since we updated the video. So we really wanted to do a couple things, update what's been going on with OpenStack, uh, both from a technology perspective but also in the community um, and also give some folks some ideas of how OpenStack has evolved. So uh, as we talked about, um, this is October, November of 2012, um, the Folsom release or the F release, which is what, the sixth or seventh release, um, is now available. And what has been introduced in Folsom is a number of changes. So let's talk about that first, and then we'll talk about what sort of change in the OpenStack community. Um, the last time we had talked about this, really what you had was you had this compute capabilities, you had uh, object storage capabilities, and there were some really basic network capabilities, but, but nothing really formalized. And then you had uh, you know, kind of the beginnings of how all this stuff would work together. And really, at the time when we talked about it previously, we sort of said, well, you know, OpenStack is really built for applications that are looking to do sort of web scale, right? So it's going to be, you know, uh, your back end is going to be object storage. It's not block. It's not FS. It's not something else. It's not fiber channel. Uh, you know, your networking is going to be very, very basic. And a lot of the maybe uh, complementary services that you might have wanted weren't necessarily there. Now, a lot's evolved since that time. So a couple of big things have evolved. Uh, the storage component, the kind of core storage component used to be in the compute node, in Nova. And so uh, NFS and iSCSI, um, you know, sort of the traditional ways you would have thought about doing networked storage um, above and beyond just DAS storage, um, were kind of embedded within the compute node. And it was making things sort of complicated. So they did a couple of things. They broke out the block piece of it, iSCSI, and moved that down into a new project called Cinder. So Cinder block storage services. And so you can now have sort of the iSCSI block-based um, way of, of storing data uh, you know, as a separate, separate from compute. It made the code easier. Uh, it made the projects better to manage. So that's happened. Um, the object storage is still done in the project called Swift. So we've got object storage can be its own thing. Uh, Cinder can be its own thing. And then we're seeing vendors who you know, can do both of them. And they'll talk to each through the appropriate API. Uh, the networking pieces evolved quite a bit. So uh, the last time we did the video, they were just starting to talk about this idea called quantum. And quantum is really, you know, for lack of a better term, the software-defined networking way in, to do things in OpenStack. And it's been driven by a lot of different vendors, uh, VMware NICERA, Cisco, um, Arista, uh, a whole lot of different vendors, uh, Mididora, a number of vendors. So basically the ability to do not only VLANs, but now being able to you know, embed sort of controller types of technology to do software-defined networking is now available within, um, within OpenStack. Um, the dashboard capability is coming along. It's evolving. It's not as far along as some of the other platforms that are out there today, such as uh, you know, CloudStack, for example. But there is the ability from a single dashboard to see what's going on across your OpenStack environment. And that project is called Glance. That's evolved. It's gotten uh, a better user interface. It's gotten more capabilities that you can see across here. And that's an area where you're going to see more and more things evolve, uh, whether it's you know, how you can have greater visibility across your OpenStack environment, how you can implement policy across that, and so on and so forth. The next thing that's evolved, actually, this has been here for a long time, is this image service, which is you know, your uh, hypervisor images or your uh, operating system images and so forth can be stored or they're kept in this project called Glance. And Glance can actually store the actual images. This is sort of the, uh, the, the way to get at those, uh, those images. But it can actually be stored back here as blobs in, in the object storage. So um, you can keep all of your, uh, you know, your AMIs, your ISOs, all the things that you're typically going to run your applications with in Glance. And then finally, the identity project, uh, which was sort of there but not completely there before, uh, is called Keystone. And this is really the identity that lets any of these components, which again, talk through APIs between each other, um, it keeps track of the identity of, of any of these. So the ability to authenticate between Quantum and Nova, the ability to authenticate between Cinder and Nova, to make sure that uh, you know, the services know what other services are available, 
Are they authenticated? Are they the proper service? Are they being run the proper way? All of that is managed through the Keystone process or the Keystone project. So as you can see, uh, a couple of big things have been happening around OpenStack is it's a much more robust environment. Uh, you know, you've got multiple ways to store, whether it's block-based or object-based, as well as NFS is still there to some extent. Um, much more robust networking is now available, so it's not just a basic layer two topology. You can build VLANs. You'll eventually be able to build sort of overlay SDN-based networks. Um, the ability to have visibility uh, from, a, from a UI, a GUI perspective for, to manage this. Um, your image repository is there, can be robust. And the authentication between all of these services can, uh, can take place today. And, and all of these are becoming much more robust. And again, like I talked about, we're into the F release called Folsom. The G release called Grizzly uh, is scheduled to be out in the uh, sort of you know, Q1, Q2, springtime, late springtime for uh, 2013. Now, the other important thing that's really happened in OpenStack that's it's important from an open source project perspective is it's really moved from uh, kind of being dominated by Rackspace and NASA and some of the early contributors um, to what's now called formally the OpenStack Foundation. And you can go online, you can look up OpenStack Foundation, but OpenStack Foundation is really the framework, the uh, governance framework that determines how the projects are going to be managed, um, how the project is going to be, you know, going to be funded so that these events can take place, and really kind of help to make sure that no individual company is really dictating where OpenStack is going, and that there's a fair shake between developers, the corporations that are involved, and that that all the voices are being heard. So that OpenStack Foundation was formalized uh, and put in place here in the fall of 2012. So uh, if you're involved with OpenStack and you, uh, you know, are used to doing other open source projects, it's worth taking a look at how that foundation is structured, which open source licenses they're using and they're deploying this with. Um, it's also helpful, and I'm going to throw out a couple of things here. Um, you know, one of the things as, as open source projects come out and more and more people want to play with them or want to deploy them, want to put them in tev, des, test and dev, um, it's how do I get access to the bits and, and you know, are, are there becoming more and more easy ways to, to get access to get this up and running. And so not only are there a number of companies that have built their entire company around OpenStack distributions, and you can go online and find those. But there are some resources that are worth taking a look at. Um, every single major Linux distribution these days has a OpenStack is, is embedded in their distributions. Uh, we're seeing a number of the major vendors have their own distributions, uh, including some of their own uh, ways of getting it up and running quickly. There are some uh, online locations like uh, devstack.org is a place you can kind of get all the bits all as one. Uh, tristack.org is an online sort of sandbox that you can use to, um, uh, to, to try this online. So there are more and more places where OpenStack is evolving. Um, there are community members that are helping to make it easier for you to get the bits. And there are companies that are evolving uh, to try and become an active participant, whether that's for commercial reasons or open source reasons, uh, to be actively involved with OpenStack. So I um, wanted to give folks an update on what was going on there. As you can see, it's becoming a much more robust project. And as the project moves along, you'll want to keep up with what's going on with Grizzly, the G release, the next release, as well as what will happen in the H release, which I don't think has been named yet. Um, but as you can see, the project has sort of evolved quite a bit from where we were six, nine months ago when we did the last video. So hopefully this was helpful uh, for you to look at OpenStack. Uh, you can see how the project's evolved. You can see some of the places you can go get the, uh, the software to try it out in your environment and see if it makes sense for you uh, beyond whatever you're doing from a, uh, from a cloud computing perspective today. Thanks and have a great day.